Okay, what we're going to do next is filter capacitors. First up, we have our actual snap-ins, which is going to be kind of nice, but you have to also look carefully. Got positive on the left here, and also this little X-out pattern that you'll see, that usually means the negative end to ground. So that means, basically, snap-in ones are actually kind of hard to push in, which is good. But we need the positive, which is, the white stripe here is the negative, so... There you go. That one's good. And then we have this whole series that are going to come across all these. And those we just want to also check quickly. I have negative here and I see a little plus on the left side. So they basically go in like this. These are all Panasonic here. And I think those are, are they also Panasonic or are they different? I can't remember. I've got that somewhere right here. Um, Oh, those are, these two are Nichicon and the rest are Panasonic, so great quality capacitors. And as I said, these are way less expensive. Oh, let me double check. Actually, these are positive there? Positive there. Okay, cool. These are way less expensive comparatively than a lot of the really higher end ones that people use for guitar amps. But they have lower ESR and just generally better characteristics because they're newer construction and newer technologies that have been used for things like computers to last and on situations for extremely long periods of time and whatnot for power supplies. So these actually are significantly better than what guitar players are used to having in their amps for filtering. And a lot of the more modern amp builders uh, are using this style. So uh, because they realize the, oh, okay, so now we're gonna look, I about did it backwards. Now the positive is switching sides on both of these. So I actually go around this way. And the way these are all done also is that they require a little bit less total voltage because they're stacked uh, in series. So they can actually take, they end up taking only roughly half of the voltage for each one with these balance resistors that are in, it, in with them as well. And so they end up um, being less complex to deal with. So they can handle a lot more voltage in these two amps. So I'm going to quickly invert this now and solder those guys in and snip leads, etc. So. And there you have it. So come back now and snip the leads and we're done with the filter caps. I'm gonna reflow that one. It looks a little hazy. So I could have accidentally gotten a little um, dry solder joint there. So I'm gonna just touch it up. That's the only one that looks like it to me, but. And I am likely to put a little silicone in between each of these that will just create like a lock them together and create less chance of vibration because it'll absorb any vibration etc and help them kind of be more stable so uh, all right so that will be that for now next up we'll end up probably doing the smaller filter capacitors um and as i tell we'll start doing the coupling capacitors at some point as well and all of these smaller capacitors so the capacitors are obviously all that's left well i do have one um transistor and the voltage regulator a few more diodes but that should be it. So maybe some of you noticed this, but like a dingling, I was confusing D16 and D13 in my head. I was looking for D16 or whatever, but turns out this is D13 right here. This is the one that's the actual bias one. And this is the one that goes off into this other circuit for the power for it. So uh, uh, I found the right diode for that, put that in. So I'm gonna quickly solder that and we'll be done with that one. I have to do a few other diodes and I've got those as separate ones because they're not this one in 405 slash seven style. But uh, yeah, so. I just got word back on that one, so I thought I'd fix it while I was at it. So we'll quickly turn that around and solder it in and fix, do what we need there. Sometimes you're staring right at it and it makes no sense. But when you step away and have some other set of eyes on it or somebody else to take a minute and tell you what they see, it suddenly makes a whole lot more sense. There we go. 
with that cool for a bit and snip the leads, but uh, there you have it. Do, do, do. Okay, so I'm going to start putting some of the other capacitors on the board here. Um, some of my other filter capacitors. So this one is 4763 and 4763 is C25. Oh, I just noticed I put that one backwards. I'm glad I looked. Okay. So this is the positive side. So that goes there. But this one I have in backwards. So I've got to unbend my leads. And try that again. So it says positive, but I'm remembering the bias. The, what confused me is these cross patterns. I told you the cross pattern is ground, which it is, but in this case, because these are in the bias circuit, we have negative bias, so we need to have negative voltage, so it goes in backwards from what you would think. The ground is connected to positive and vice versa. Here's my PNP transistor. Now, my hope is since they've referred this, there is a the potential at times only, but I think only if you're doing replacements that you could get the order of these wrong of the three pins. But in this case, since they have it marked out for me and they're the ones that chose it, I think will be good to just slot this guy in there like that. Just facing the thing the same direction as the icon on the board. So that should be good there. And that's the only transistor like that on the circuit. Oh no, C5 is a little tiny thing. Oh, that is a little tiny thing, okay. So C5, I think it looks to me as part of that uh, voltage regulator circuit. Let's peek at the schematic to be sure. Yeah, it's a four, yep, C5, okay. So that goes next to D2 that we already have in place there. And I'm trying to look at that one. It's hard for me to see which way is negative and which one's positive. Um, I think square is a negative often, uh, but let me try and look. It looks like one of those connects directly to the diode, so I'll peek at that. So C5 connects directly to the D2, the positive end. So the positive end should be connecting to there. So that, that may be something that's worth learning is the square one is the, I think what's the positive end in these cases, but it looks to me like from what I'm looking at, that should be the correct way is this, the, the, well, you know, let's, let's actually just to be safe, we're going to make sure there's continuity between those two, because that should be right there to there. There is. Okay, cool. So the one end of that diode directly connects to this. So we go in here like this with positive on that side and negative the other and I just realized as I was looking down that I left my um, other capacitor cathode capacitor done I didn't put it in it's right here it was sitting there so and that one will go over right here so gotta get that guy all right we're getting down to the nitty-gritty of these kind of extra components in fact I think this might be the last one 
Um, this is the inductor, which goes in here. Um, inductor is part of that circuit that's the voltage regulator. I'm sure it just kind of helps control ripple. Inductors are almost always designed as a way of stopping ripple. Um, And inductors don't have a direction because they're just a single coil of wire. So I will put it in this way. So one of the other things I need to do now is get my uh, these uh, resistors in, the variable resistors, but the problem I've had is I was missing two of them, they didn't have them in stock. So I tried to order a different kind and uh, we didn't have that one, they, I thought they'd fit and they don't. So, uh, I'm going to have to try and sort that out. I either have to do some hodgepodge to get things to work. TR4. Yes, so that's the, the mid pot. We just didn't have that available. So these, these values are just purely straight from the uh, Boozmaster because there's not an HRM on that. Now, I will say, I did find out HRM stands actually for Hot Rubber Monkey. I was about that for weird. Um, so this is my 25K that goes into the middle hole. There we go. Now I will also do a quick check and see that these should be 25K across the two legs. Oh, I'm only getting 10K. Now, pull it out of circuit. This is part of one of those things I was telling you about where you want to, sometimes you have to have stuff out of circuit to get a good value out of it. There we go, 25K. So it's working in parallel with some other resistor in that area that's causing it to read the 10K, I think. But there's that one. Um, and I had some other ones, I thought, right here, but I don't know where I did with them now, so I'm gonna try and find them. I could have thrown them in the recycle bin because I was trying to get rid of a bunch of my uh, excess junk. So we'll be back after the cut, see if I can find it. Okay, yep, I found them like a dingling. I actually did throw them in my recycle bin because they were kind of in a pile of other stuff. I shouldn't have buried them. So this is two, um, these are the two, uh, where are they? Two, um, 250Ks. And the two 250Ks are TR3 and TR5, which are the other two for that same one. So I will again measure what they are. I'm going to do 250K. So 250K. Good grief. My cat Jack's coming by to say hi. He may slip in the screen into view there. There's one 250K. These are snap-in pots, which is nice. Double check this one as well. 250K. There's also two 10Ks, and I actually happen to have several of those because at one point I was using a 10K for one of the other amp builds that I did. Off the top of my head, I can't remember which one it was. I think it might have been the Tweedledee Deluxe or something like that. So I've got those two. One of them is the phase inverter trimmer, and one of them is the um, the trimmer for the overdrive. So I'm going to go ahead those really quickly. Alright, we'll 
also quickly measure them, make sure they are saying 10K like we want. They do. And of course, they also look like to me, they're a little bit different sized. So they're not gonna fit as easily as I thought, but we'll check. Um, 10K, TR6 and TR7. Here, six is the phase inverter balance. Oh, of course it's not gonna fit. No, that's not gonna work. Okay, so I have to find a source for the preamp boost level and the bias i think those are both the ones that were 100k that i don't have um, so i'm gonna have to find two 10k and 200k that fit this size because they were out of stock of the one so these definitely don't fit and then that's a bummer um so i will quickly turn this over and solder those three guys in so we have those in place Those are in. And we really are at a stop. So my bad attempt at thinking that these were gonna be the same size is a fail. Um, so I need to get two 10K pots of these types and see if I can order the, the other pots as well. Like I said, I did get some, but they're way too big as well, and I'd have to do that kind of same weird mangling to get them to go in, uh, which I don't like. Um, so, all right, well, that's all for now, gang. Uh, we will keep you apprised as more progress happens, but thank you very much for watching, um, and please uh, do give me some comments below of what things you may have caught me doing wrong, things that you like to learn about, and things that I could... Uh, show you in more detail. So thanks a lot. Cheers. Have a good one.